Bangalore and welcome to Manzu Classes. I hope you're doing wonderful and having a great learning. I thought to start the session with the easy peasy question and the question is spot a few line segments and shapes made up of line segments in real life. You know there are many right? We have already discussed some of them in the previous classes. For example, table, chair, windows, door, scissor, lawn handle etc etc. Okay, so tell me how many line segments can you find in case of a scissor? I can see the two over here, then there are more as well, right? Okay, how many line segments can you find in cloth handle? Do you say three? Yes, there are three line segments in the cloth handle. And if you observe carefully, all these three line segments are actually connected to each other and it is forming a closed shape. So what is the closed shape made up of three line segments is called? Triangle, right? Okay, now I asked you a question by the end of the last class. The question was, what is the space between two connected line segments is called? For example, here these are two connected line segments. What is the space between these two is called? Or maybe let's take these two line segments. Let's, we can take these two line segments as well in case of a scissor. So what is the space called? My dear, this space is called angle. And in today's class, we are going to learn about angles and its measurements in detail. So the topic of the day is what is an angle, how to represent the angles, how to measure the angle using a tool called protractor and at last we are going to talk about how to draw the angles using the same tool protractor. Now you must be wondering that ma'am, what is the need to learn about angles? So my dear, let's say we have to make a tent house. So in order to build it, we need two line segments or maybe two rods which are in the shape of line segments, right? Okay, so you need to know how much to bend it, how much space we need to leave between these two line segments. You cannot bend it like this. If you are going to bend it, in, then you may not fit inside it properly. But if you are going to bend it in this way, then definitely you will have enough space to stand and to sit in the tent house. Let's start this topic with an activity. Let's draw a point, let's say point Q. Let's draw another point, point P, and let's join them together. What do you get? You got a line segment, right? Okay, let's draw some more points and let's join them. Here, the line segments QP and PS are actually bent differently than the line segments QP and QR. That is, the space between these two line segments is actually more. Whereas, the space which is between these two line segments is lesser. Now, what is the space called? This space is called angle. So, therefore, the angle between QP and PS is more, whereas the angle between QP and QR is lesser. Now, let's talk in detail about each pair of these line segments. Let's take the first pair of line segments, that is line segment PQ and QR. If you notice, what is the common point? The common point is Q. And this common point Q has a special name. So because the angle is formed over here, that's why it has a special name. And this special name is called vertex. So the angle is formed when two line segments or two rays or two lines have a common point. And because here the common point is point Q, therefore the angle is formed at point Q or vertex Q. Now let's take the other pair of line segments. So what is the common point over here? Point P, right? So where is the angle formed? The angle is formed at point P only and therefore the vertex in this case is point P. Since we have learned how to name point, how to name lines, how to name line segment, how to name rays, let's learn how to name the angles. First thing first, there is a symbol which is used to represent the angle. Suppose you are writing angle P. Now I don't know whether you are talking about an angle or a point. So you have to mention this symbol before P. That's how anybody gets to know that you are talking about the angle P. So it's very important to use the symbol of angle. And here the angle is angle Q. Not only this, there is a special way to write the angles. Because the vertex here is Q, therefore the angle made at this point Q is angle Q or angle PQR or angle RQP. Now let's see the other case where the vertex is point P. So the angle made over here is angle P or angle QPS or angle SPQ. Either you can go clockwise or you may go anticlockwise while naming the angles. But make sure to write the vertex between the other two points. So that was the point of observation. Now you try to identify the angles in these shapes. So how many angles are there in case of a rectangle? 
is one, two, three, four. Four angles are over here. And how many angles are there in pentagon? The pentagon is a five-sided polygon. That is five-sided closed shape. So here we have five angles. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now there's a special thing for you to remember. Just like vertex, we have arms of an angle as well. For example, I do my hands like this. So my two palms over here are the arms of the angle, and the space between them is the angle. And the vertex point over here is this connecting point, my wrist. So therefore, the ray QP and ray QR are the two arms of the angle over here. And angles can be formed by two rays as well. We have just learned about it, right? Okay. Now, Sia has a question, a mind-blowing question. The question is, is there a way to measure how bent the two line segments are? And yes, there is a way. We can use a protractor. I know you must have seen this tool in your geometry boxes. And the name of this tool is protractor. This tool is used to measure the angles. And as we already know, everything has a separate unit. For example, if I write 150 centimeters, what does that mean? What am I talking about here? I'm talking about length or maybe height. If I write 150 grams, then what am I talking about? I am talking about weight of something. And similarly, if I write 150 degrees, that means I am talking about the measure of the angle. So angles are measured in degrees and the symbol for degree is this. 0 degree, 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree, 40 degree, 50 degree and likewise still 180 degrees. So this shows that this curved edge of protractor is divided into 180 equal parts starting from 0 degree till 180 degrees. And each tiny mark on the protractor shows 1 degree. So this is 0, 0 to this particular tiny mark is 1 degree. Then similarly 2 degrees, 3 degrees, 4 degrees, 5 degrees and so on. So till here it shows that it is 10 degrees. Now, let's see how to measure the angle using the protractor. So, we have an angle over here. So, quickly tell me what is the name of this angle? The vertex over here is at point O. So, the angle name is angle AOB or simply angle O. Now, first thing first, bring in your protractors and place it over to this angle. Make sure to put the protractor's center point over the vertex of the angle because we are measuring this space and one more important thing put any one arm of the angle on the zero degree line so this is a zero degree line of the protractor and we have actually put this line on the angles arm OB now let's measure this angle start from zero degree now 10 degree, 20 degree, 30, 40, 50, 60. So it has actually taken the space of 60 degrees. Therefore, the angle over here is 60 degree. Angle AOB is 60 degree. Now you can remove the protractor and write the angle. Angle AOB or simply angle O is equal to 60 degrees. This is done. But what if you have to make or you have to draw an angle? Then what are you going to do? Let's say we have to draw an angle of 50 degrees. So how to draw it? First, take a scale because you need a scale to draw the arms of the angles, to draw line segments or rays. Correct. So draw any one baseline of any length you want to. Let's take the baseline as AB over here. Now remove the scale. The line segment has been drawn. Any length you can take. Now keep the protractor on the vertex A. Now because we have to draw 50 degrees. So what you have to do is mark the point on the 50 degrees. Over here is the 50 degrees. That's it. Now join AC and here you have angle CAB as 50 degrees. Angle A is 50 degrees, right? Now since we have learned about what is an angle, how to measure the angle, how to draw an angle, how to represent the angle, it's time to summarize. Let's summarize whatever we have learned in today's class. So we have learned that angle is formed whenever two rays or two line segments or two lines have a common point. The angle is represented by this symbol. For example, angle O or angle AOB. Angles are measured in degrees. Let's say this is equal to 40 degrees. So whenever you have a degree at the top of any number, means that means the measure of an angle is given. The protractor is a tool with which we can measure an angle, we can draw the angles. Now it's your time to spark your curiosity. Quickly bring in some real life objects and try to figure out the angles using a protractor. I will see you in the next session. Till then take care. Bye-bye. See you.